Coming to you live from the studios of the Sideshow Network, it's Rob has a podcast. And now, here's the guy who's about to sit down with the young lad himself, <laughs> Rob Sestrino. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Rob has a podcast. I'm here live with a one-on-one sit-down with the man who is the fourth place finisher of Survivor Kagiyan and the winner of the RHAP Survivor Fan Favorite Player of the Season, Spencer Bledsoe. How you doing? I'm doing good, Spencer. How are you? Awesome. Yes. Yeah. I mean, fourth place is uh, was not satisfying, but any disappointment I had there was easily made up for by the first place finish in the RHAP. <laughs> and it was a landslide. It was a big win. What was it? What? It was. You know, I don't have the exact vote count. It was about 4,500 votes. I think you basically like pretty much tripled up, Tony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's because I befriended the tabulator, Kurt. Yes. Well, and I did not thank the tabulator, Kurt Clark, uh, for all of his work with that, but he did a great job with once again. Again, putting together the results and all of the official tabulating needs of Rob as a podcast. It's an honor. What yeah. can I say? Anyway, so I'm very excited to sit down here and talk, and talk to you. This has been um, something that myself and I think a lot of people have been waiting for for since <laughs> since we first laid eyes on you on on this season. So it's oh, been geez. such such a, ger- a culmination to get to this point. Yeah, it's been a wait. Um, I was looking forward to talking to you the whole season. It, I knew it was going to be a long wait, but happy to finally be here. Happy to finally be here. So let me just set up what we're going to do here today. So this is going to be all in one show, but we are going to have a break in the middle that Spencer, a very busy guy, totally he's totally Hollywood now at this point. He has totally uh, all sorts of interviews and stuff that come, goes along with the, you know, this is this is probably the busiest week of your entire life. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's like a huge contrast because I go from like sitting alone at home, like twiddling my thumbs to all of this, not having time to do anything to, you know, in about a week, I'm sure I'll be right back at, uh, at stage one. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very, it's a real peak and a, <laughs> And, you know, and then back to a baseline right. very, very fast. And I think that as Survivor could, goes on, like, whereas, like, the people that were on the first Survivor, it was like that peak was about, like, over six years. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> or, you know, now the attention is turned towards the brilliantly titled uh, Survivor San Juan Del Tour. <laughs> so. Yeah, something else like that. No, it, and it's also better for you guys that the people who go on Survivor on the even-numbered seasons mm-hmm. are, you know, at least you get the summer. Whereas you get the victory lap, you get a victory lap yeah. a little bit. Whereas the people who do it in the odd number seasons, it's like you know, basically you get like a month. Yeah, uh, and, and Christmas is over that time, and New Year's, and then people. Well, are, is it really a victory lap for anyone other than Team TV? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it certainly is. It's it's a fun it's a fun fun thing. It's just that the time where it's like the really crazy time has yeah, has gotten like a half life of shorter and shorter and right, shorter and right, shorter. Right, right, right. But it's still very very fun, and I appreciate that in this super busy eye of the storm you took some time to of course. Uh, to yeah. get together our, our HAP was priority number one that, well that's good to, good to know and so <laughs> what, we're go- what we're gonna do here right now is we're gonna talk for a little bit and then Spencer has another uh, interview call that he needs to make in the middle and so we're gonna stop and then we're gonna take a it's gonna just be a little bit of a break in the podcast we're gonna uh, pl- gonna have something that very fun that I want to play for you guys and then we're gonna come back with the second half of the interview where I'm going to take all of your questions from Facebook. Awesome. All right. So I guess let me start here by uh, that oh, giving you something that you deserve. I, I, much like Tony, I have a bag of tricks here myself. And so let me present to you uh, from my bag of tricks. Uh, here we have. No, oh God, the, I'm going to change my mind if you're fumbling with your bag of tricks. <laughs> no, don't change your mind. Don't uh, give this to, don't interview Jeremy or anything like that. All right. Here is the. Rob is a podcast survivor, Kagiyan, fan favorite player oh, of the man. season, trophy. This is awesome. Did you make this? I, I ordered it and then and I then customized the it. it. Yes. Yeah, because yes. the bell is the nice touch. Yes. It would be just a trophy, but it has a bell on it. <laughs> would you like to give it the, the first ceremonial ring? <laughs> there you go. All right. So congratulations. That should be a nice uh, mantle piece uh, for you. And I like it, this. Now it's like parody where you're not, you're not the only person with the bell now. Yes, you have you have your own bell. I also uh, gave you some stuff. This is a RHAP coffee mug, which was supposed awesome. to go to Hayden. Uh, Eat last your heart season. out, Hayden. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I have something something else for you. Is this the Landauer <laughs> and, and Shamar? Uh, now, I know how you feel about letters. Maybe you don't want to open that for a couple of months. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, and that uh, there are there is a uh, eight by ten of Julia Landauer and Shamar there for you. So there you go. Congratulations. Fantastic. Well, a well struck <laughs> player of the season award for you, Spencer. So this congratulations. Is going, like right by my desk. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> All right. So before we really get, start to dig into the season and dig deep, uh, how have the last couple days been? Now, what is the, you know, basically from when people saw you, you know, at the end of the show, yeah. Wednesday night, what, what has, you know, your last 48 hours been? <laughs> last 48 hours, um, craziest 48 hours of my life, probably. Whoa. Um, yeah. Uh, which is not saying much. <laughs> yeah, um, I was gonna say, well, what was the previous craziest uh, forty-eight hours? Oh, uh, geez, I wouldn't. Yeah, ask my fraternity. Um, I would say that. Uh, yeah, I, I slept probably four hours since the live show. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Friday now, so I'd, uh, I, you know, got whisked away for interviews. Slept like half an hour. Um, went out, met like John Cochran, which was surreal. Yeah, uh, all these all these players around, you know, going out uh, on uh, on Wednesday night, and then. Uh, uh, just, just trying to take it relatively easy to that sense. Yeah. And has just about everybody that you know in real life contacted you since that point? Yeah. Um, yeah. Haven't it's it, my phone's a little overwhelming, um, but it's trying to trying to keep up. Okay, so let's start, talk about sort of your experience at all and some of the things that we talked yesterday and we got about a 15 minute interview, but I'm sure we mm-hmm. could do uh, a lot more as we'll demonstrate here in the next <laughs> however long this is. But one of the questions that I got from a lot of people since then has been, did you feel or did you find out from anybody, did you change anybody's mind when you gave, you know, your stump speech for Tony? Yeah, yeah. no, that's a good question because I think there were a lot of people people, you know, everyone thought that I changed like a lot of people's minds because the jury seemed really bitter at Tony. Um, when I went out into the audience at the first commercial break of the live show, Tyler Perry came up and like shook my hand. It's like, I want you to know that you changed the jury. You changed their mind. Whoa. Yeah. Um, which was cool. I, I don't know how he knew that, but <laughs> <laughs> it, well, I think Tyler Perry is pretty much omniscient as yeah, demonstrated. He probably, by- you know, woke up at 3 a.m. and rolled out of bed and was like, I got to text probes, you know, and, and probes told him. But uh, no, I think that there were some people that maybe you thought I changed their mind and I didn't. I think uh, like people like Trish and Jeremiah kind of just wanted to say their piece mm-hmm. and uh, and then they were still going to vote for Tony. Trish, I, I don't think she was really as upset as she, as she came off. Um, I think... I might have changed like one or two. I know Jeffra and Sarah were pretty on the fence and they both told me that, you know, I I kind of assuaged their doubts about voting for Tony. Um, Mm. But I don't think I changed things to the point that I I flipped the vote. I think if anything, it would have been like 7-2, maybe 6-3 if I hadn't said anything. And when you guys are there, did you feel like, oh yeah, Tony's really got this is, or was it sort of like up in the air? I felt like Tony's really got this. I mean, I... Like, people didn't necessarily like Tony, but they respected his game a lot more than they respected Woo's. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, back to me changing the vote, though, I really, I felt like it was going Tony's way. If anything, I could I, I came close to hurting Tony, apparently, because Cass told me that she uh, almost flipped her vote to Woo after <laughs> my speech. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that, that would be so chaos Cass. That, that would be, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm glad she stuck with Tony. I, I feel like the, uh, it, it was tough. You know, I, I felt, I did feel really bad for Woo watching it, you know, last night mm-hmm. that, um, you know, it doesn't, it, it was obviously his decision reflected poorly on him as a player, um, but it reflected so well on him as a person. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I felt he, he came off really well and is a genuinely really awesome guy. And so I felt very bad for Wu. Um, but I, I, at the end of the day, you know, as a fan, I, I want to see the right story. And I feel like there's few better stories than this lunatic Tony winning. 